Hey guys, we've got a couple more locomotives to review here. Um, Broadway Limited Imports, the new release GS4. I, uh, I ordered one in the uh, aluminum and orange, which is the Western Pacific, and a Southern Pacific in-service black. The, uh, the weight of the box is, uh, is pretty hefty, so I'm assuming this is a pretty uh, heavy model with some serious pulling power. I know the Broadway Limited um, articulated uh, daylight cars are they're quite heavy and, and pretty difficult to pull. So hopefully they uh, had that in mind when they designed this new uh, GS4. Let's um, let's get it out of the box and see what it looks like. Okay, typical um, Broadway Limited imports uh, packaging. Do you guys ever have a Broadway Limited? This is why you want to keep your box. They're going to need that date right there if you ever have a warranty issue. So anyway, typical Broadway Limited Imports uh, packaging. we got the operator's manual here on top. It was covered by a piece of foam and the blister pack. Wow, this thing's heavy. And uh, yeah, it's secured in there. Let's, uh, let's get it out of the blister pack and check it out. New messages from Broadway Limited. Uh, to avoid damage to your BLI locomotive, please turn off track power before placing locomotive on the track. It's amazing they have to tell people that, but yeah, it's always a good idea. Avoid short circuits that way. So inside the blister pack, after we, I, we wow, I slid that off, we have the, uh, you know, the desiccant pack. It says do not eat, so we'll, we'll not eat it. Funnel. For oil for the smoke, smoke fluid rather. It is oil. Um, spare traction tires. Looks like a coupler box for the front, more than likely. All kinds of goodies here. And is this a driver wrench? I'm assuming. Yeah, maybe. It's got cutouts in each end for. Uh, Hex bolts, it looks like. And let's go ahead and get her all the way out of here. Well, this is new, or at least new to me. There's two screws underneath here securing the model to this base plate. Hey, while it's on that base plate, let's, uh, yeah, let's do this. Base plate's, pla base plate's plastic, so shouldn't weigh much. Get that in ounces. Let's see. Let me pick up the whole thing with two hands. On the scales, 42 point, almost three ounces. 2.64 pounds. She's a little hefty. Anyway, yeah, they're screws. Um, through the base plate up into the locomotive, I think, and the tinder, securing it to that plate. So let me get those off, and we'll continue on. Nope, they were not screws. They were just metal pins that the locomotive was resting on to prevent it from moving, you know, forward, backward, side to side. So definitely secure in this new packaging. Pretty impressive. Okay, let's get this mess cleaned up here and... Uh, Check out this locomotive. All right, let's look over this locomotive. Man, looking good. So yesterday we we looked at a the new River Rossi Big Boy, and while the details on that were really nice for the price point. I mean, the details on this guy are they're right up there where they should be. Look at that. We've got uh, external conduits here. Oops, sorry. External conduits here for the lights. All these different handrails. Got separately applied ladders, it looks like. Air hoses. Cut levers. The rivet detail looks pretty good. And the paint. Wow. Pretty amazing.
Got a figure in there. I'm sure that window slides back and forth. More details back through here than the big boy from River Rossi had. Yeah, probably a little blowdown plumbing and who knows what else. Another piece of plumbing here. The throttle linkage looks like it's a separately applied piece here. Yeah, look at that. That's just, that's really nice. This orange and silver Western Pacific paint just really pops. Glad I picked one of these up. Then all the separately applied pieces in the front. It looks like we even have mesh under here for, for airflow. There's probably some sort of Maybe superheater type radiator or something. I don't know. If you know, put in the comments. Cut lever. We have a headlight and a Mars light. And we have separately applied conduit for the lights up here. The, um, the GS4s that Southern Pacific used uh, had whistles and horns. Looks like we have marker lights, so it'll be interesting to see if those actually function. And class lights. So we've got numbers here and halfway on the uh, on the boiler. Might have a little scratch right there. I have to touch that up. One thing I noticed here, I mean, this has been touted by some other reviewers as the best GS4 model that you can buy, but this here slides back and forth, obviously. And then the walkway pops down. And in real life, that's how they get back here. They open these two doors here. They can climb the ladder, come out, and they're up here. Pretty cool. Take a look at the top. Three dynamos, a whistle. Blow off valves, probably access to the sand and a single exhaust back here on the tender. Some separately applied plumbing. I don't know if that opens this here. Now, some of the old. Broadway Limited, the original run of the GS4, you access uh, through one of these to turn the smoke on and off and sound volume and things like that. I suspect this one's going to be different. But anyway, yeah, let's uh, layer on our side and take a look underneath. Okay, the belly of the beast here. <laughs> so we got drivers. Looks like we have, I'm not sure which driver the traction tire is on. Usually it's on the main one here. Looks like right there, eh? Yep, that's a definitely a traction tire. This is the main driver. You can see the protrusion here for the gear inside here. So this is going to be your traction tire set of wheels here. Looks like the, um, the trailing truck wheels are electrified. So they are using those to pick up power. You see the linkage to all the brakes here, the brake shoes, front truck looks pretty standard, BLI issue, access to the uh, front coupler box, wires for the decoder, pickups for the rear wheels, the holes for the speakers, so it must have dual 28 millimeter speakers. And here are these holes here, here, here. There's a couple up here. There's one here. Those are the holes that these little pins on this new plate go into to secure the locomotive. Like I said, it was definitely secured. It wasn't going anywhere. 
Looks like the front one might go through the truck here, look, huh? We'll go right through there, maybe, and up in. Yep, I think so. Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, Southern Pacific all black model. All right, <clears throat> not sure if the details will show up that well on the all black, but we'll, we'll give it a go here. Looking good. Can we focus on that, I wonder? Let's try zooming in. Sometimes the phone cameras work better if you zoom in from further away. It's not too bad. There are the number boards here. And we have numbers here on the headlight assembly. So same as before, Mars light, headlight. Looks like uh, the same grill underneath here. Struggling to focus here. So, yeah, these cameras struggle to focus on black objects there. Notice it was much crisp, more crisp on the uh, silver model. But same details. Pretty much exactly the same locomotive, ex except for the paint job. We've got a, a figure in there. I'm sure the window moves. The top here slides back and forth. And that pops down. Pop back up. Close it. Close that. Same details on the tender. Class lights are looking good. Hopefully they are functional. That'll even look better. Again, some other reviewers have touted this is the best HO GS4 ever produced. We'll see about that. It does look good. All right, let's take these up to the uh, the hobby room and check the functionality of the uh, Paragon 4 decoder. So if you guys find yourself looking for the switch that turns off, on and off the smoke, it's underneath that little cover right there. A little focus. So you can see on off. There's a magnet towards the aft end. So by default, it is on, and the little cover just snaps back on with the magnet holding it in place. This is the same as it was on the, the old um, Daylight GS4 Broadway Limited that I have, which was actually made by uh, like Precision Brass or someone. I, I don't know. It was a brass model that Broadway Limited put their QSI decoder in, maybe? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I wanted to... Uh, point that out because just quickly looking through the manual I didn't see it in there and this might help you find out where you turn the smoke off if you don't like smoke I'm going to leave it on on this on the western pacific model for demonstrations but I'll probably turn it off on the others I run smoke for videos for YouTube but otherwise it's off because honestly the whole thing will just get pretty messy actually so Let's, uh, let's put the cover back on, and I'll show you what that looks like with the cover on. Okay, cover's back in place, and there you have it. Let's, uh, well, she's struggling to focus again. I need a better camera. One day when I make money off of YouTube, I can buy a camera. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, let's, um, let's pop this guy on the track. Set the address if it's, I'm sure the default is three. And uh, go through that list of uh, functions there and see what we got. I'm mean, anxious to hear what the sounds are. See if they've improved the, uh, the GS4 sound since the um, 
the original release years ago. That's what I use to add smoke fluid. That way it gets it down in there. You know, just a few drops, but get it down there. So like one line on that guy is, is five drops, I believe. So let's do a little squirt. About like that. That's all we need. Okay, first startup, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, looks like same as always for Paragon. It's going to be an F9, but let's, uh, let's first see if uh, the address is correct in my handheld. Yes, it is. So we have 003 selected, hit F9, we have sounds, we have lights. We have someone walking on the gravel. So I'm going to go ahead and set the address and uh, we'll remove the microphone from the... Uh, right now I have a noise canceling microphone and it actually will cancel out some of the sounds from the locomotive. So be right back. Okay, we are back without the microphone clipped to my t-shirt. We're using the regular phone microphone now, otherwise the noise canceling microphone would have prevented you from hearing pretty much anything that the locomotive did. Although BLI is known for being extremely loud right out of the box, so we'll probably have to turn that down a little bit. Let's see if we can uh, get a start up here with F9. I did have to bust out JMRI to change the address to 482. Um, since BLI started putting their little keep alive in there, changing the address can be kind of finicky sometimes, at least with NCE. Uh, anyway, here we go, F9 for startup. Somebody walked out to the locomotive along the gravel, climbed up the ladder, opened the door, jumped in. Now he's turning valves. Now he's firing up the dynamo. And I'm happy to report that yes, the class lights, number boards, headlight. It's all light up. Pretty cool. Okay, let's try the bell. Okay. Try to listen. Let's try. Sometimes if you, uh, let's see if it's still programmed, but you can tap. Uh, on NCE, you can tap the whistle three or four times to get a long whistle. Try that one more time. Yep. Okay, so we got a couple of sounds at three. This thing could be in pro mode, so. I'm following the standard. That's supposed to be the air pump. Blow down. Water fill. Funny, they put all these sounds on there, and you know what? We use maybe three of them. Get it? We're overfilling it. You can hear the water dripping on the ground. Turn that off. Seven is smoke on, smoke off. I'm drawing about 0.34 amps. If I turn smoke off, 
drops to 0.08, and slows back on, jumps up to 0.3, 0.4 right away. So that's working. Master volume mute. That's nice. She's pretty loud. I'm going to turn it down for sure. And then now we get into um, the second set of functions. I don't think I have, I don't, I don't have this handheld program to do the second set. But what we're going to want to do is turn the Mars light on and check that out, right? So that's, uh, hold on just a second. Okay, got the lights going, got the Mars light going. Yeah, you can see that. Let's uh, go to speed step one of 128 forward. Here we go. seems to be working. Let's see the Mars light on and off. I don't know that we need to really hear crew chatter, industrial sounds, lumber mill, whistle toggle. We could whistle to the horn, or toggle to the horn rather, instead of the whistle. Uh, track sounds, long whistle, and yard radio chatter, yard sounds, station sounds, water injector, and oil injector. Let's try the whistle toggle and see what the horn sounds like. I think that's going to be the horn. And that's going to be... Um, 22. Yeah, so now, now it's using its air horn, which the GS has had up top, top right. You can see it there. Go back to the whistle. I like that better. F25, long whistle. A long, yeah, long whistle. Okay. Check the volume on this and uh, turn it down a little bit. Be right back. Okay, there we go. Used uh, the NC Power Cab to set, uh, I think it's CV133 is the master volume, down to 50 and uh, a little more tolerable. Nothing like a locomotive screaming at you, right? That's a little better. What's up? Uh, First, let's back it up. Back it up. Right about there. And then let's see if I can turn off this light here. Get a better idea of these lights. Just maybe it would help to turn off the lights on. Let's go back forward. Let's see inside. 
Let's see what that is. Mm, that's a good one. So the number boards do light up. Headlight, the class lights light up, and these number boards up here light up. And you saw on the rear the uh, class lights on the tender light up as well. So let's throw this guy on the layout and see what you can do. I mean, I'm kind of curious about the pulling power. She's pretty heavy. So I'm guessing the pulling power is going to be right up there. Yesterday, the River Rossi Big Boy did a 5.7 ounces, I believe. Let's see where this guy comes in. Actually, one more thing I wanted to show you. Let's turn on the light here real quick. Is the Paragon 4s all come with current keepers built in. So let's disconnect the power and see how long she continues to make some sound here. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds, six, seven seconds. Not bad. Let's real quick check this before we forget. Mm, darn near perfect. Now it won't let go. Let's try the front. Imagine putting these guys in a consist. That'd be kind of cool. Close enough. All right, so we got the pull meter out. We got locomotive on the tracks. Let's see what she can do for pulling power. She doesn't know that I can edit. Okay, so let's see. Can you see the numbers? We are going to try to get a pulling test going on this BLI GS4. And here we go, maybe. Oh, pulling pretty hard. Yeah. 12.7, almost 13 ounces. That's as much as a BLI big boy. Impressive. Cool. Okay, zoomed in. Ready to go. Volume, I think I bumped it back up to 65. Let's see how that sounds. Not bad. I'm tapping the accelerator. It's much smoother than that, trust me. And I'm in 28 speed step. It's the tower of flashlight. This is pretty good. Yeah, 65 might be a little loud. Might bump it back down to 55. All right, 2% grade in a turn. Should be a piece of cake. Yeah, it doesn't care. Okay, let's check some slow speed here. Speed step one of 128.
Speed step two. Speed step three. Four. Speed step five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. You get the idea. See if we can get that Mars light going. I'm assuming the 2% gray will be no problem. Nope.
interesting, BLI has always had that giant step between speed step 14 and 15 on speed steps 28. So that's 14. That's 15. Really, guys? Come on. That's the tightest radius of my layout right there, I believe. I think it's 23, but I'm not sure. It's been a while since I set this up. hard to catch detail on a black locomotive without really good lighting. I don't know guys, in closing, uh, BLI seem to hit some home runs here. These are, these are decent GS4s. Really good pulling power, no issues on the layout except for the minor derailing of the front pilot, but that was my fault on the Southern Pacific model. Um, everything works, smoke is crazy good. I need to turn it off, but anyway, yeah. You need a GS4 that can pull your consist of passenger cars, I think this might be the one. And that's gonna be my uh, fast mail locomotive there. I've 3D printed up a bunch of uh, baggage cars to make a, a fast mail train but uh, yeah I like them and they very well may be the best HO scale mass-produced GS4 right now so I got both these at train world you can go over there and check them out I'll put a link in the uh, description hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and uh, happy railroading <laughs>